when we look at Copilot, I think it's helpful or maybe even necessary to break Copilot down into two different feature sets. Um, what first set being more kind of uh, on-demand type features, right? For the agent to uh, optionally reach out to and, and request access to. Uh, the second set of features would be more uh, more of a uh, the AI is driving right they're in the the driver's seat where the agent themselves would be uh, acting more as a call them a supervisor or someone that comes in and reviews those uh, um, prompts that the AI is suggesting. So we're going to cover both of those. Uh, first half we'll cover more of those uh, you know tools that those agents can pick and choose from as they're working through their use cases. I say that because you're probably going to have strategies and different approaches to uh, each of your workflows and use cases and types of tickets that come through. And you'll want to make a decision on if they're going down, you know, kind of this road that we're going to go through first, or is this a scenario where the AI can be more in control and manage those for us? So cool. Um, I'm going to again fly through this pretty quickly. We'll start up at the top here. Um, one of the new features we launched last week. Oh, excuse me. This is one feature that is in EAP status. So it is considered in Copilot. Um, you, do, you will have access to it if you do sign up for the EAP. It's called Similar Tickets. Um, it has been moved up to the search bar. And what this will do is, as you can see, well, I got a pretty bad example here. I've got a, in this demo account, I keep repeating the same ticket over and over on a recurring basis. But what this is doing is looking at the current ticket, finding similar tickets, and mapping those so we can jump in and, and you know, maybe use that previously solved ticket to answer this current ticket. We're going to way down here. You can see we've integrated uh, the intent directly into the header of the conversation. So those Previously, those that had been in the EAP program might remember that sitting over here on the right hand side in the intelligence panel. The new UI is now uh, listing that directly in the header and it'll stay pinned there throughout the conversation. We see the summary also listed as where there too. Um, you can see I, I can apply this. You can also refresh this summary. Uh, if I was to you know, have some back and forth conversations, maybe exchange this to a different agent, they might want to refresh that with the latest updates. Work over here onto the right hand side, merge suggestions. You can see I'm prompted. Uh, now, what merge suggestions does is it will look at a window of, uh, well, a month window, two weeks prior and two weeks before this ticket or after this ticket was created to hopefully find suggested um, tickets that should be merged, right? So, in this case, uh, Kevin here, maybe he's written into us yesterday or maybe he's called into us today and, uh, and then he's messaged us. It's a great way for us to prompt those agents to find those matching. Uh, tickets that we can suggest to merge. I'm going to pop over into the knowledge base. So this should be look familiar to most of you. What we've added into the knowledge base is what we call agent uh, AI agent search or gen search for agents. Uh, the way this operates is, well, let me, I can't talk and talk at the same time, but <laughs> what are your API rate limits? What this does is goes out and searches your knowledge base and generates a response. So of course, those of you that are familiar with the knowledge base panel, um, it will show those articles. Uh, in this case, what we've introduced is what we call quick answers. Gen AI search for agents allows me to generate a response based off of content. Now, what you also might see here too, is that this is one of those options that we have for Copilot that allows us to uh, access external knowledge. So in my example here, I've got set up through uh, federated search our confluence account and i could you know generate a response directly from confluence if i wanted to uh, i could copy that message down here and respond back which leads us into uh, our next feature set which many of you might have seen this was one of our first ai features that we introduced into zendesk where we can expand messages and make more friendly or more formal so we can expand that out I'm going to delete that though because I want to actually show this next feature, which is suggested replies. So when you first land on a ticket, uh, suggested replies has a couple different flavors. We're seeing the knowledge-based flavor, and what this does is goes out and looks for a matching article and creates a generated response for us to potentially send or review, perhaps, and then send. Uh, the other flavor is macro suggestions. Macro suggestions have been around with Zendesk for quite a while, so some of you might be familiar with that. Um, in this case, we've not found a high confidence matching uh, macro, so we revert to those knowledge base articles instead. There is a third option with suggested replies, which is just for messaging, and that'll create sort of an introduction message. You know, in this case, we'd say something like, hey, Kevin, thanks. I see you're writing in about uh, issue with lace on, laces on your Gravity Pro shoes. We'll be with you in just a moment. Leading up to that, this is actually... Uh, 
uh, not a co-pilot feature, I will mention, just because technically it's not part of the co-pilot package. It's part of the intelligent triage package, along with intent, sentiment, and language. This is called entity detection. And what it does is allows you to set a pre-list of pre predefined keywords to look for or scrape within a message and match those into structured data fields. So in this case, we've got some products and their you know, shoes in this example, and we're looking for those messages finding those, you can see we also highlight those and we can map those to those fields as well. All right, cool. So that is kind of those core uh, uh, AI tools that are built into the AI agent workspace. And we're gonna flip over into kind of a different mode, if you will. Uh, and this is what we call auto assist. So as I said, auto assist is more in control. It's more uh, in the driver's seat and we're just functioning more as a, a supervisor or a reviewer uh, of tasks, if you will. So I'm going to get a conversation started here uh, in this example. We'll say, you know, in this storyline here, we're uh, an e-commerce company and customers got a question around shipping and delivery related. So I'm going to say, nope, I need to send in a ticket. I'm going to give it my info here, my favorite customer, Jennifer. So we'll pop over here on the left-hand side. We'll see that ticket come through in a conversation. Oh, I'm not online. Let's go online. Okay, there we go. We accept that conversation. Ticket pops open. And immediately as that ticket loads, we see a little bit of a different interface down here. So this is what we call auto assist. And as you can see, it's functioning more as a, uh, a prompt for my agent to review and send messages. So as I, I'm gonna close this just so we have a little bit more room to work with. So I review this, yep, it looks good. I'm gonna send that past over to my end user. And yeah, in this case, Jennifer, she's got a very specific question. And in this case, she's a new customer, right? And she's placing her first order. So she's writing that in. She sounds, she's sounds. she got some sense that there was a, she heard about a, a promotion for her uh, first time buyers. So we can see in our response here, we automatically go look in our procedures. And we're gonna see that here next on the back end and see that our policy states that new customers do receive free shipping. In fact, let's give them a coupon code to insert into that message. So that's a real simple example. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a feel for auto, how auto assist looks and feel for an agent before we pop into the back end. But really, this is where kind of the, the game changer of auto assist comes into play. And what this does, you can see we're in guide. So FYI, procedures now live in guide, which is great because we're authoring content. It's a, it's a built-in editor, author, authoring tool. So it's a great repurpose of that. So I'm going to pop into that exact procedure that we just used. So Typically procedures will follow kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, instructions, right? Step one, greet the customer, um, ask for questions. We might even contain some of that information within there. So if they had asked specific questions around our pricing, we would have responded with that. If I jump down here, this, you can see that exact note that it's referring to. When that customer informed us we, she was a new customer, we basically follow this instruction and send over that message in response. So that's a real simple, straightforward uh, example. You know, procedures on their own are uh, really just kind of conversational, right? So it improves my back and forth and speeds that those processes along. But let's say you need to, during that procedure, maybe perform a function, right? I need to update a ticket field or access some information from some external system. That's where we bring in actions. Now, actions are brand new solution. It's actually a, a platform or core solution. You can see it actually lives in uh, up in webhooks in our settings. So I say that because this is not necessarily specifically to uh, AI. We have plans to use actions all throughout Zendesk, but auto assist and procedures is a first consumer of actions. So those of you that have ever built in flow builder or bot builder in Zendesk, uh, the API lookup step, we're basically using that exact same configuration tool to allow you as an admin, meaning not necessarily a developer, but someone who's got a little bit of background and understanding of how APIs work, to create API calls, uh, to edit, to update, to view uh, data that exists in some external system. So I won't go through all the you know step-by-step -step instructions on how to build these, but it's very simple once you do it a couple of times and you get a feel for how it works. In this example, I've got an action that's actually dipping into my custom objects. So the way that works in a procedure, once you create those actions is, uh, I'll go with this procedure here. We'll, we'll show this on the agent side here in just a moment. So in this example, this is where it gets 
really interesting, right? So I just actually, in this case, to call that action, I literally just typed that instruction out in the procedure, right? Execute the order lookup custom object action. We just looked at that. And once that data lives in Zendesk, this is where it gets really cool. We can now reformat that perhaps, or kind of control how that gets displayed, right? In my example, I was returning the, the date in you know kind of a funky JSON, ugly, uh, non-human readable format. So I said, literally just typed out, hey, convert that timestamp to a proper format that a human could read. Um, I also was displaying some, you know, kind of labels a little bit incorrectly. So I just tell the procedure to display those in this format, follow this conversion format. Cool. So let's see how that looks actually in action. So I'm going to stick with this same conversation. I'm going to say, hey there, uh, can you look up my order detail? Oops. And of course, I can misspell and it'll still figure it out for me. Um, so in that instruction procedure we just looked at, first step was we need that ID. Obviously, I need an ID to reference the order to look it up. I mean, uh, I've got a real order here in custom objects. So this is an action that uh, the procedure is prompting the agent with to approve and, and go through that next or basically execute that action. We approve that. It goes and dips into that endpoint that I just looked at. And it, as you recall, this is the exact format I wanted to display it in. I'm going to send that over and we'll wrap that up.